morning, Aztec. Uh, this is actually the second time doing this foresight. I did it once before at Cribs. Um, so, as Karen said, the title of the foresight is How on Earth Can I Exercise When I'm So Busy? So I'm going to be going through today with you some very simple and easy ways that you can fit exercise into a busy schedule. Uh, before I do that, I want to get a feel for the room. So put your hand up if you have a membership at a gym. Ah, a good few number of you. Now keep your hand up if you actually use that, that membership. You can ah, all that. put your hand up, Carl. I have a few, I do go to my Yeah, one, one session a week. <laughs> yeah. But hopefully after today with these tips, you'll be able to fit in more than one session a week. That's good to see that there's people still actually using that membership. But what I tend to find, uh, the number one excuse that people give to me for, for not exercising is that I simply don't have the time. But this is not the case. Um, everybody does have time. It's just a case of it not being your number one priority. Did you know that a one hour workout only takes up 4% of your day? So it takes up very little amount of time out of the 24 hours that you have. So my first tip would be to make time for exercise by getting up earlier. So set an alarm for an hour earlier than you normally would. It doesn't have to be a full gym session. It could just be something as simple as getting up a little bit earlier just going for a quick walk. If you've got a dog, you know, take the dog out for, for a walk. Or you could get out on the bike as well, go for a cycle. So just by getting up a little bit earlier, getting out and doing something active is going to set you up nicely for the day. Um, this moves me on nicely to my second tip. Now, the majority of us in here are probably all self-employed, uh, bar maybe a few exceptions. So that puts us in a privileged position where we're able to have full control over our schedule. <laughs> now... I guarantee you that the majority of you, somewhere in your diary, have got at least one or two free slots where you've got nothing booked in. So what I want you to do after today is to have a look through your diary and have a look for a free slot or two free slots. And then what I want you to do is to pop in there that you're going to go do a workout. Now this doesn't have to be at the gym. Um, you could do this at home or it could be just something as simple as going for a walk or a run in your local park. But I want you to go away and do that. Have a look for a free time slot and stick in your calendar that you're going to go do a workout in that time. So you've got to make it part of your routine like you would everything else, like you probably put 4N in your calendar today. That moves on nicely to the next tip. Now, a lot of us, we say we don't have time to exercise, yet we still find the time to watch our favourite box set, whether that be Game of Thrones or, in my case, Suits. Uh, we still manage to find the time to watch that. Now, you've got to change your mindset from being a couch potato and just sitting and watching TV. And you can make use of that time and do some basic body weight exercises. So, for example, uh, you could use the edge of the sofa to do tricep dips. You could do push-ups against the edge of the sofa. Basic exercises like squats, lunges, all those different kind of things. So that's an hour, maybe two hours where you're sitting and watching TV. Even if you just spend half an hour while you're watching that, you could be using that time to do something active. This moves on to my next tip, which is your commute to work. Um, obviously, a few of you may need your car to get around to work, particularly if you have a job that means that you have to go and meet people to do sales. But if you don't necessarily need your car, or you live quite close to where your office is, you could turn your commute to work into an active commute. So you could walk to work, run to work, cycle. Just doing something, that means that when you're on your way to work, you're keeping a bit more active, which is going to be beneficial to your health. And obviously, we all have heard that, that 10,000 steps a day thrown around a lot. And by having an active commute, that is one way that you can get your step count up. Um, again, if you do have to take your car to work with you, um, this is another tip I have for you. Um, and that is to park further away. So rather than picking, you know, the, the closest space that you can find to wherever you are. So if you came here today, you could have gone to one of the ones down the back. And that means you've got to walk that little bit further. Which again, is going to help you to get more steps in and put your step count up. Um, next tip would be um, to, instead of staying in the office and carrying on working when you have your lunch break... Leave the office for a bit, take a break. It's not only going to, it's going to be good for your mental health, but also your physical health. Um, and when you leave the office, uh, just go for a walk. Take a few minutes just to have some new time and uh, escape from the office and relax from working. I'm not saying you have to go to the gym on your lunch break, but I do know people that do this. But just taking that little bit of time to 
go and do something active is going to have huge benefits to you for your health and uh, also for your mental health too uh, because it can get quite stressful if you just sit and work all day. On to my next tip which is to take the stairs more. I know it's quite an easy option just to get in the lift or go up an escalator but use the stairs. It's going to help you again to get your step count up. So I know I keep talking about step count um, and the reason why that's so good is there is this thing called NEAT and that stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis. This is where I get a bit sciencey. And basically this is any kind of um, activity that is not exercise but still burns calories. So for example, right now where I'm upstairs, up here um, talking, um, even while you're sat there you're burning calories and by walking more that is a really good way to improve this NEAT. Um, this is going to be hugely beneficial for your metabolism and it's also going to help you to burn more calories which would be beneficial particularly if you're trying to lose weight. Um, this next tip is particularly aimed at those of you that have children. Uh, this is another uh, kind of thing that people say to me is I'd love to exercise but unfortunately I have to look after the kids. Now get the family involved. It's going to be good for the kids health as well as your health. So you could do something like on the weekend um, you could go for a cycle ride or you could find sort of a local park or a woodland area where you could just go for a walk as a family. This is a good way to spend time with your family as well as doing something active that's going to be good for your health. Um, so yeah, get the family involved. And it'll probably you can make it fun for them as well, particularly you know, if you'll go out on the bike or you know, spend some time somewhere, particularly if there's somewhere with like a play area nearby. Moving on to the final tip, and that is 24-hour gyms. They do exist, and in fact, in Bristol, we've got loads of them. Uh, off the top of my head, the closest one to here would probably be Anytime Fitness in Bradley Stoke, or perhaps Snap Fitness in Filton. Uh, in the city centre as well, you've got the one I work for, the gym group. Uh, they also have one at Longwell Green, and then you've also got uh, Pure Gym in the city centre as well. Uh, but yeah, these 24-hour gyms exist, and it means that you can pretty much go to the gym any time of the day, including at silly o'clock in the morning. And believe me, people do go at that time of the morning. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to recap the points again, and then I'll open it up to Q&A at the end. Um, so the number one tip is that you do have time to exercise. It's just not necessarily your priority. And you need to make time for exercise by getting up earlier. Tip number two is to have a look in your diary for a free time slot. Um, you know, particularly if you're self-employed, you do have control over your diary and, and make it a priority to put in there as part of your daily routine. Tip number three, work out while watching TV. Just keep it basic, some basic body weight exercises. Um, and have a look on YouTube as well. There's tons of different uh, no equipment workouts that you can do. Um, the next tip was to have an active commute, so walk, run, uh, cycle to work and if you do perhaps need your car um, for working uh, then park further away so that you have to walk that little bit further. Um, the next tip was to take that time to leave the office or leave where you're working from on your lunch break and just go for a walk and, and do something active to give yourself that little bit of personal space. Um, moving on to the next tip, and that was to take the stairs. So rather than getting in the lift or using an escalator, take the stairs. And again, that's going to be really good for getting up your step count. Next tip, getting the family involved. Make it a fun activity that you do together as a family. And that can be a really good way for you to be a bit healthier, but also get the kids to be a bit healthier. And finally, the last tip was to uh, join a 24-hour gym. So anyway, there's some really simple and effective tips that even if you just go and implement one of those are going to have a huge effect on your health. Um, so I'd like to open it up to questions, if anyone has any questions at all. Right. What's the best way to develop discipline? Because I was talking to someone about this yesterday and they're telling me they want to go to gym like four times, five times a week and at the moment they're going no, no times a week. And I was like, look, start off by doing five minutes a day. If you can commit to five minutes a day and you build that discipline, then if you can do five minutes a day, you can probably do 15 minutes a day. Um, um, yeah, I think you're kind of right there. So you've got to start off small. Um, yeah. So don't try and go in straight away with doing four times a week. You've got to kind of gradually increase the amount of time you go. 
Um, and, and the one way that would, would help with that is by putting it in your calendar so it's part of your day. Yeah. But yeah, start by gradually increasing it. So if you're doing nothing at the minute, just start by making a simple change, which could be just, you know, walking more. Um, and then, you know, you could increase that to doing one structured workout a day or one structured workout a week, and then gradually increasing the amount that you do until you're up to that four times a week. Mark? How valuable do you think it is to have a, a goal you're trying to get towards? Uh, uh, like for me, it's me recovery. Yeah. I'm being able to play around a golf with a 24 to 6 meter handicap. I think having a clear goal that you're working towards can certainly help from a motivational point of view. And I think it is something very important that yeah. when you're exercising, you have some kind of goal that you're working towards. So for you, obviously, yours is, is knee, uh, you know, recovering from that knee injury. Other people, it could be that you know they've got holiday coming up and they want to look amazing on the beach and in their holiday photos, um, or it could just be something as simple as you know you just want to feel a bit less stressed and a bit more confident. So I, I think having a set goal to work towards is definitely a big way to kind of stay motivated with exercise. Any other questions? Yeah. Here's kind of seems. Basically, I only watch because Donald is really hot in it. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's your favourite character? Um, <laughs> <laughs> What's that web address? Yeah. <laughs> I think I quite like Harvey Specter. I think he's my favourite. Just I like his whole attitude towards business. And I think I was actually advised by one of the kind of mentors that I work with to go and watch Suits purely to look at the way Harvey Specter does sales. <laughs> and, and apparently that, that would make me a better salesperson by watching Suits. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Um, my my issue sometimes is, is that it's just going on your own in yeah. terms of the gym. It can be really sort of static and that, and you go. It's really difficult first of all to motiv motivate yourself to go to the gym, and then you're training on your own, for example. Uh, it's like yeah, same. You know, you're doing the same thing, etc. Uh, have you got any sort of tips with, with regards to that? Um, find a friend who's got oh, similar goals. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, seriously, find a friend or a family member or a partner who's got similar goals to you and go, go together. You know, me and myself, sometimes even when I do my own workouts, I struggle a little bit to, to work that hard. But when I'm with a friend, you know, they help to push you that extra mile and make you work a bit harder. Well, join his gym, yeah. and then half of four in anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and even if there's nobody else within, you'll still find him at the end of the gym. Yeah. yeah, I'm always around there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> he does wear headphones and he pretends he can't hear what you're saying. <laughs> For me, anyway. <laughs> no, so you can't hear what you're saying. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Sometimes it's nice to be able to do my own workout without being interrupted. So what's your goal at the moment now, fitness-wise? Uh, my goal, really, is coming to bulk up a bit. You know, I've always been quite skinny and I've always wanted to have bigger arms. So that's a kind of personal goal that I'm working towards at the minute. Um, but, you know, just general health as well. Just staying healthy, staying active. Yeah, yeah. And how are you doing with that? Um, well, really I did. Happy. I did go a bit off track <laughs> when I was ill for for like a week, and I lost a load of weight. But I'm getting that back again now, so it's now working towards getting to my ideal weight, which is about seventy kilos. Oh. So that's about another three kilos to gain. Yeah. And I've got <laughs> How do you minimise injury? <laughs> the way that you minimise injury is you do a proper warm up. So you know, start by doing something that gets your heart rate up and gets the muscles moving. Um, either by you know doing a five minutes of cardio or uh, doing a few dynamic stretches. Um, then when you're actually you know, using weights, um, lift with correct form. Um, and if you're not sure about correct form, make sure you seek guidance from someone at your gym on that. Um, and then make sure you do a cool down afterwards. Um, so, you know, again, five minutes like cardio, a few stretches, and use these things called foam rollers. They're amazing. They work magic. Yeah, yeah that, that thing that That's I showed horrible. you. Take no notice of <laughs> <laughs> Robert, could you show us a dynamic stretch, please? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. ah, yeah. A dynamic stretch is basically a stretch that has movement. So, for example, you've got something like a lunge. That, that would be um, <laughs> an example of a dynamic stretch. Yeah. <laughs> One last question. How do you properly use a bone roller? Oh. Um, 
basically you go on YouTube and search how to foam roll because it's quite hard to explain without actually having one but essentially you would um, mostly use it for the legs but you can also use it for the back and then you want to just very slowly sort of roll it along the leg like that up and down um, and then that will kind of get really deep into the muscle and it's like you're having a massage almost. It's not, it's painful. It is if you do it on this side of the leg. <laughs> on a serious yeah. note though. He is very good and very encouraging and um, insulting at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you insult me. I've heard all kinds of swear words from exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> 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 well, Go on then, Carl. It's not a sales pitch when we're off, but why should people have personal training? Oh. What's that? Why should somebody have personal training? Uh, I've got to be careful because it's not allowed to be a sales pitch. But basically, a lot of what I get people to do, you could quite easily go on the internet and find. But with a personal trainer, you have someone to implement it for you and make you do it. So it's the accountability side of things and the motivation. And actually, people do talk to you in that gym. Yeah. I mean, if, no, I, if I can't use a piece of equipment, I've had quite a few other people have come over to help me. Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> 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 well, was it because of your life? Are you all right now? Are you lost? <laughs> <laughs> Where's your home? <laughs> <laughs> There's one thing that I, have to, I can't even reach to get on the bloody The place. locker. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, quite a lot of things I can't reach to. Just <laughs> stand on things. <laughs> you come along and all stuff down for me. <laughs> yeah, and if you're, if you're not that tall, you want to go with someone who's quite tall. <laughs> that's, that's my advice for you. Okay. Not wrong. <laughs> go, go with Tommy, because he can reach the stuff yeah, you can't. Tommy, yeah, Tommy. <laughs> sure he can. <laughs> any other questions? Have we, have we got time for any more questions? Um, uh, maybe one or two. Yeah. One last question, anyone? No, everybody knows everything now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Quick question then. Um, <clears throat> what do you reckon all these supplements you can buy online to uh, bulk up? And... Basically, my attitude towards supplements is that the, the clue is in the name, they should supplement the diet. So if, the only time that you should really need a supplement is, for example, if you don't have time to get a full meal or if you're not getting the, the right amount of nutrition from actual food. So that, that's that real mm. food should always come first, supplements second. Okay. Yeah. And, and a full English breakfast is, uh, is yeah. that real food or is that? Yeah, lots of protein. And <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's when you're going down to the um, Rad Camp. <laughs> 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 no, but seriously, you, if, if you are on top of your nutrition, you can sort of get away with things like that. Particularly if you're tracking calories. It's not necessarily the healthiest way to do it. You should try and get healthy food first. But if you do track your calories and factor in something like a McDonald's or a full English, or then cake after yeah. Yes. yeah, then or you Jordan. can. Cake after a <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a gluten free organic cake. It wasn't gluten free organic cake, and it was very lovely. But yeah, no, if you do track your calories, you can get away with things like that. Yeah. Anyway, we worked for that. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for your questions.